Hi, I'm John, the time-based energy community currency engineer, and today we're talking about Chris Cook's article, Banking on Energy. He's talking about an energy standard of money, which is similar to a time standard of money, but his energy standard of money doesn't include human energy yet, only petroleum energy so far. Banking on Energy from peakenergy.blogspot.com. Uh, Chris Cook has a post at the Oil Drum on his proposal for an energy backed alternative currency banking on energy. So, at a high level conference in Tehran in January, I made a proposal in respect of an energy standard for international trade, which was well received to the extent that it has been suggested that a presentation be made to the Economic Cooperation Organization, ECO, states concentrated around the Caspian Sea, but extending to Pakistan and Turkey. Now, of course, energy is manpower times time, or energy is equal to E equals MC squared, matter. So there are two kinds of energy. There's the hard stuff, this kind of energy, and there's human power over an hour of labor. So when he's talking about an energy standard of money, it also includes a time standard of money, as well as a stuff standard of money. The concept is extremely simple, and it is that international trade should be denominated not in dollars, but in energy, or time. Producers of energy, such as Russia and Iran, may then, in exchange for value received, receive units redeemable either in electricity or in energy vector fuel such as gasoline, heating fuel, fuel oil, and above all natural gas which all have a fixed value denominated energy and human time. Global transactions will then take place within the framework of an international energy clearing union subject to the collective guarantees of energy producer and consumer nations generally. Both energy creditor nations, such as Russia, Iran, the GCC, and Norway, and energy debtor nations, such as the US, UK, EU, would all pay an amount into a global energy pool in support of the guarantee, worried about his energy chips not but being backed up by energy? The resulting balances would be deployed in massive investment in new renewable energy infrastructure and energy efficiency savings. The U.S., which is the biggest energy debtor by far, could therefore be funded by the pool in redeploying much of its increasingly baroque military expenditure, not just into the Green New Deal proposed in the U.S., but also globally in partnership with the immense U.K. and E.U. intellectual capital at the cutting edge of research and development. The use of an energy dollar, or petro energy unit, as it was referred to in Iran, addresses one of the most pressing issues. This is the catastrophic waste of carbon-based energy in those countries blessed or cursed with large oil and gas reserves. Anyone who wishes to see the negative effects of gasoline available at 30 cents a gallon on the environment and on the quality of life need only travel to Tehran. President Ahmadinejad recently proposed to massively raise gasoline prices and to compensate the population with cash subsidies, and the Majis threw out the proposal. The unitization of gasoline, on the other hand, allows the price of gasoline to be raised to global levels and for the population to be compensated with units resumable for gasoline. While some will continue to pro profligate use of gasoline, most will cut back on gasoline use and exchange their units for something else of value. Perhaps the most interesting potential lies in the global market in natural gas, where Iran, Qatar, and Russia own two-thirds of the global reserves and recently instituted a gas OPEC based in Doha. The unitization and clearing of natural gas offers the potential basis for an international energy clearing union, I believe. Just like an international time clearing union, I believe. The massive loans which finance Qatar's liquid natural gas infrastructure may be refinanced interest-free simply by selling units redeemable in natural gas to major consumers such as China or using them to buy with IOUs for gas, who thereby lock in the price and 
may found a new global energy-based reserve currency. I believe that it is only through the use of an energy standard rather than a fiat currency or gold standard that the transition from carbon-based fuels to renewable energy may be painlessly made. The time standard does it too. And in doing so, allow the U.S. and other nations to repay their energy and other resource debts. President Obama, for his part, may dispense with the deficit-based cap-and-trade mechanism which, like emissions trading, attempts to monetize by political fiat something with no intrinsic value, which of course brings us back to Treasury Secretary Geithner's proposal also to do just that. So I will conclude by saying, not for the first time, that oil is not priced in dollars. Dollars are priced in oil, and recommend that the G20 turn their attention to a sustainable international energy clearing unit alternative to our current unsustainable global monetary system. And if you accept human energy as well as petroleum energy, then you got a great system. So that was posted by Big Gav on Monday, April 6, 2009.